taught and where he passed away called Haverhill, Massachusetts. That's where his tomb is located today. The main protagonist in this book is a boy by the name of Johnny Dixon. Now, Johnny Dixon is not a football star, sports star, or macho type, or poster boy type. Johnny Dixon is more of an intellectual type of child. He has intellectual pursuits. He enjoys reading about ancient history, ancient archaeology, particularly ancient Egypt. As you'll discover when, when and if you decide to read this book. As I said, he's the main protagonist in this work. He lives with his grandparents. His mother passed away from, Long I from cancer in Long Island, New York, where his family was originally from. He is now staying with his grandparents in Massachusetts while his father is off serving as an air pilot in the Korean War. The home atmosphere in this book is very picturesque, 1950s type atmosphere. This book does take place in the early 1950s. Johnny Dixon's mother figure in this book, his grandmother, Kate Dixon, is very house proud and very matronly. She always has dinner made and an evening meal is always on the table. The book takes particular note that she is a fussy housekeeper as well. You definitely get the Leave it to Beaver Donna Reed type setting in this book, which is very quaint and very nice and very homey. Especially when you want to sit down with a, with a historical fiction book and think about more simple times and ages past. The plot thickens when the other main protagonist, Professor Roderick Childerness's car gets stuck in the snow on the street in which they live called Fillmore Street. Grandpa Henry Dixon and Professor Roderick Childerness try to rescue his car. After the two men become weary of this pursuit, they come into the home where the professor decides to calm his temper and nerves, and he's known for having a rotten temper. He decides to calm himself and insists on Brandy and, and Kate Dixon's homemade fudge. As he sits and warms himself by the coal stove, the professor begins a chilling tale that intrigues his young friend Johnny Dixon. It is about a spirit of an evil priest that, still, that supposedly still haunts St. Michael's Catholic Church in Dustin Heights. The following day, Johnny takes refuge in the sacristy of the local parish, St. Michael's, and while he is there, he discovers a grimy, dusty book hollowed out with a figurine placed inside along with, the, with a warning stating this should not be removed from St. Michael's Church. This church is a place of worship that keeps the evil powers in check, but once the figurine is removed, strange things begin to happen that lead to a showdown in the White Mountains of New Hampshire where the priest's remains are finally destroyed and he can no longer haunt St. Michael's Church or torment young Johnny Dixon. This and other books by John Belairs have stood the test of time, I believe because Belairs cleverly interwoven historical facts as well as occult folklore and mythology into chilling tales that were very amusing. John Belairs was an excellent storyteller and his books are still read widely today. If you like Harry Potter, Mary Downing Hahn, The Last Apprentice series by Joseph Delaney or R.L. Stein, you should give these a try and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Thank you for listening. Love and light.